Hi there. This video provides a short example of a fair value hedge. As you know, when you have a transaction denominated in a foreign currency, there's a risk of fluctuation in the value of that receivable or payable, and quite often a hedge is used to reduce the risk. So here's our example. On December 1, 2014, we're purchasing equipment from the US for US $100,000. We have a December 31 year end and our payable is due at the end of January 2015. So we'll need to do an adjustment at the end of December and an adjustment for the foreign currency again at the end of January. So also on December 1, we enter into a forward exchange contract to provide us the 100,000 US dollars. So let's look at the rates that we're going to use. First of all, for the underlying account payable, we use the December 1 spot rate. Now I've seen students get the rate wrong because they divided instead of multiplied. So whether you multiply or divide depends on the type of quote you receive. Now this one here, where we have US $1, equals an amount in Canadian, could be more or less than a dollar, lately a lot more. Anyway, that's called a direct quote. So just think about it, if a dollar is more than a dollar Canadian, then a hundred thousand dollars US is more than a hundred thousand in Canadian. So you need to multiply to get the hundred and thirteen. Again, I've seen students divide, don't do that if you do, your whole question is wrong because you're using the wrong numbers from the beginning. So that's the rate we use for the underlying payable. For the hedge, we're using the 60-day forward rate of 1.152 and again you're going to multiply for that. So let's look at the journal entries. Here's the entry to debit equipment, credit accounts payable in US dollars. It's helpful to put the US beside this as a reminder that this is payable in US and here is the Canadian equivalent. Here's the hedge receivable from bank. They're going to give us 100,000 US dollars and this is the Canadian value of that 60 day forward rate today. The payable to bank is fixed at 115,200 Canadian. So when you book a foreign exchange gain or loss later on, leave the Canadian fixed amount alone. What you're adjusting for is the fluctuation in value of the Canadian dollar, US dollar exchange rate. So you're going to be adjusting the US receivable from bank. Now, if the underlying transaction was an account receivable, then the payable to bank would be foreign and you would adjust that again as the foreign currency amount gets the adjustment and on your hedge the domestic payment here does not get adjusted. So that's another common mistake that students make. So here we have just some T accounts as of December 1 showing your account payable and your receivable from bank. The next thing we'll need to do is a year-end adjustment for our foreign exchange gain or loss. So on December 31 we have a spot rate of 1.15. You need the spot rate to adjust your accounts payable. Also on December 31 we have a 30-day forward rate of 1.162. This matches your January 31 payment date and settlement date so this is the rate that we use to adjust our hedge. So if we consider first the account payable, your new balance is 100,000 US times a rate of 115 for 115,000. Now you had 113,000 before, so you need to increase the account payable with a credit, and of course the debit is going to be a foreign exchange loss of $2,000. Now on the hedge, your new balance is 1162 your previous balance was 1152 so you're going to have to increase receivable from bank with a debit 
and your Ford Exchange gain credit will be a thousand. So here are the two journal entries that you do at year end to adjust. Here's your account payable going up with a foreign exchange loss. Here's your receivable from bank increasing with a foreign exchange gain. So if we were to look at the T accounts again, you'll see that the December 31 balance of your account payable is here and the December 31 balance for your receivable from bank is here. And again, this is the Canadian dollar equivalent of that 100,000 US. So what's left to do on January 31 is pay the account payable and settle the hedge with the bank. So we have a January 31 spot rate of 121. Let's first adjust our account payable balance to match the spot rate. We were at 115, so that means we have another loss of $6,000 as the Canadian equivalent of that 100,000 US keeps going up and up and up. So we're gonna first adjust our account payable, then we're gonna pay it. So just like our December 31 entry, we have an exchange loss and credit our account payable to increase it. That brings our account payable to 121. It's all US dollars here, so we're gonna pay it and give them 121,000, which works out to 100,000 US. Now the next entry, it's actually a set of three entries, is to settle the hedge. So here's our spot rate again. Our new balance for the hedge becomes 121,000. And if you want to go back and look at that T account, you'll notice that our December 31 previous balance was 116.2, so the receivable from bank needs to increase 4,800, representing an exchange gain. And as soon as we do that, we can pay the bank the Canadian dollars that we agreed to pay them on December 1, that amount, and then we can receive 100,000 US from the bank with a current value of 121. Now, in some instances, you may want to combine some of these entries. I've used three separate entries so that you can see exactly what's going on. So here is the first entry to bring our receivable from bank up to a balance of 121,000. Here's us paying the bank the contract price. So this was in Canadian. We just give them their 115.2. And this is the bank handing us 100,000 US dollars with a current value of 121 Canadian. So these are the three entries that you need to settle the hedge or condense them as you wish. Now, looking at our foreign exchange gain or loss in total, these two losses came from the accounts payable, these two gains came from the hedge, so our hedge was partially effective in reducing our losses. Our loss was 2200, but without a hedge, it would have been 8000. Now, on the next slide, I've reproduced all of the journal entries so that you can see all of them at the same page. Um, so here's all the entries for the payable, here's all the entries for the hedge, and that just lets you see everything all at once. And if you get a question on a fair value hedge that spans year end, this is basically the pattern. Of course, if the underlying transaction is a receivable, it's going to be a little bit different, right? Because you're going to have receivable from bank, Canadian, payable to bank, foreign. So it would be reversed. So you need to be ready for either a payable or a receivable.